seated in this uh, historic venue. My colleague in cabinet and good friend, Minister of INB, Railways, Metis, Ashwini Vaishnavji, the MD and CEO of the raison d'etre of our presence here tonight, Mr. Barundas, seated in the audience with me, the Chief Marketing and Sales Officer of VFB Stuttgart, Mr. Rowan Kasper, State Secretary for Political Coordination of Baden-Württemberg, Mr. Florian Hassler, our Indian Ambassador, Mr. Ajit Gupte, our Council General, Shatrugan Sinaji, an old family friend and in a league of his own, someone who has taken India to shores across the seven seas, Chairman and Managing Director of Kalyani Forge, Baba Kalyaniji. Members from the Indian diaspora, my friends in Germany, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this wonderful event that has been hosted by Mr. Barundas and TV9. I was ruminating while coming here that it's probably the first time in the history of not only Indian media, but probably media worldwide, and I stand to be corrected, that an event of this magnitude scale is being held and a, in, at a historical MHP arena, the Temple of Soccer in Stuttgart. And what does this tell you? This conveys many stories. The first being a sports person myself. And as Mr. Casper said in his address, Sports is not only a physical activity. Sports involves camaraderie. Sports builds a team. Sports builds partnerships. And sports promotes relationships between people. And therefore, it's only apt that when a confident India, a nation rooted in 5,000 years of civilizational history, now arriving on the global stage, takes a foot forward, it's only natural that it will be a striker's foot but it will be a team effort. And therefore, I must congratulate Varundasji. He has, in his own way, with TV9, started an epoch making trend. I have seen this stadium many a time on television screens. But it's due to him that today the confluence between sports, between people, between cultures, and between civilizations is taking place on this stage in Stuttgart. So let me start by saying Guten Abend, Namaskar. 
My address today is going to talk about our countries, our histories, our civilizations. My colleague and good friend has talked about India's story. But we are gathered here today under this umbrella as two distinguished countries standing side by side on the global firmament. One, in the heart of Europe, that is an economic powerhouse. And the other, on the southern side of the globe, that today has risen as a beacon of hope a beacon of reliability, a beacon of trust, and a beacon for the world to look upon in the form of Bharat Mata, my India. One that, as Mr. Hassler talked about, not only your state, sir, but Germany, that has been the cradle of innovation and the other, the validator of all of those inventions in the form of India. One that is well established as a formidable player and the other that today has arisen as an emerging player in the new international world order. And therefore, together, Germany and India present that impeccable force of global good. And therefore, I stand before you on this podium paying tribute to the capabilities, the potential of both Deutschland and Bharat Mata. And isn't it a fascinating truth that two countries that are so far apart, thousands of kilometers, will still share such important complementary strengths. Unique strengths that are brought onto the global stage by both countries. Germany as a paragon of engineering excellence. And we see that all around us in Stuttgart. Whether it is Bosch or Porsche or Mercedes, engineering excellence and sustainability. And the two in this era of mankind must go hand in hand. India too follows that principle. As my colleague Ashwini ji has pointed out in his address. So on the one hand, a paragon of excellence, a paragon of engineering, a paragon of sustainability and the other in the form of India, representing youthful prowess. 70% of India's population under the age of 35. We're talking about a billion people, more than the full population of Europe and the United States of America combined. Our software capability, and the fact that on a technological landscape, we are ascending and changing, metamorphizing every single minute and second of our existence. These complementary strengths, I really believe, nurture a relationship that has been steeped 
to look at global challenges and present a shared future to the world. And therefore, in the global jigsaw, Germany and India blend seamlessly together. Now, these characteristics, ladies and gentlemen, these attributes and these capabilities are rooted in a sense of mutual understanding and partnership. German philosopher Johann Gottfried Herder once remarked, and I quote, mankind's origins can be traced to India where the human mind got the first shapes of wisdom and virtue, unquote. And this sentiment echoes the history of both our nations' exchanges with each other. Barun Dasji, in his address, was just talking about Rabindranath Tagoreji. Rabindranath Tagore visited Germany multiple times. And he invited thinkers, philosophers, thought leaders from Germany to Shantiniketan to create that fountainhead, to create that confluence, to create that bridging of minds and hearts, to create that fountainhead of knowledge and diversity. And therefore, the feelings and the sentiments that resonate not only amongst our political class, not only amongst our business class, but India and Germany's relationship is based on an exchange of ideas, based on an exchange of literature, based on an exchange of philosophy, based on an exchange of invention, which far exceed traditional diplomatic processes. And if you ask me a question, the root of all this, the root of all this lies in the capability of our people. Our people are the true ambassadors of this relationship. The Indian diaspora, the biggest in the world at over 25 million, stands as a vibrant testament to India's global spirit. Limited to only a few hundreds in the 1920s in Germany, today they are close to over a quarter of a million in Germany. And besides, we are backed by a vast skilled workforce ready to meet the demands of modern economies across the world, whether it's in the automation industry, the manufacturing industry, in IT, in nursing, across the board, a multitude of opportunities where Indians are not only visible, but Indians are invaluable. Indians help in forging new paths of collaboration between people, grounded in our strengths. And India's dynamism, with its vast engineering commitment and capability, meets Germans' expertise, both in precision, in design, and in quality. And therefore, the 50,000 students that today are immersed in scholastic pursuits in Germany form a very, very key bridge to this relationship. The faith of Germany in the capacity and capability of our Indian talent stands on four pillars, democracy, demography, data, and demand, both powered by technology and our infrastructure. In the last decade, under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, 
India has transformed. India has covered ground that she was not able to cover in the six de decades prior to the last decade. Some of the statistics that my friend Ashwini ji portrayed amongst all of you, whether it's the area of airports, the area of highways, digitization, the area of telecom. India has transformed herself over the last decade. And it is this transformation. If you take the area of telecom alone, the fact that we've gone from 250 million internet users to 970 million. In the area of broadband, from 60 million users, 15 times to 924 million, over 1.16 billion mobile subscribers. And mind you, while we look at that exponential growth, across that inflection point, costs have dramatically fallen. One GB of data that would cost close to $3.4, today costs close to about 11 cents. Voice that would cost 50 paise a minute, today costs only 3 paise a minute. That's the, the capability and the size of transformation that India has gone through. And today, that transformation is seen by German companies that are in India. Take the example of Mercedes-Benz. When Mercedes-Benz first entered the Indian market over 35 years ago, they described their strategy in terms of strategic patience. Today, Mercedes is the largest luxury car manufacturer in India. And this also speaks to the arrival of Indian consumerism, which today has become sophisticated, has become advanced, has become discerning. And therefore, I do believe that if you look at the Indian market, which opens up tremendous opportunities for German innovators, German entrepreneurs, German businessmen, German startups, not only to make in India, but as Prime Minister Modi says, make in India, but make for the world. And I see five pillars on which this relationship can be strengthened. The first, bilateral trade. We are today at close to $26.5 billion in terms of bilateral trade. Germany is one of the largest FDI investors in India. Over 2,000 German companies today are present in India with an investment of greater than $15 billion. And leaders on both sides, Prime Minister Modi on one side, the German Chancellor, His Excellency Scholz on the other, have been working assiduously to increase that exchange. The seventh IGC that was held in India was tremendously successful. And our German Chancellor, His Excellency Scholz himself, started off the German Incubator Accelerator Program in India, by which Indian companies could enter the German market. The second pillar is the collaboration in the defense sector. The Indo-Pacific, no longer the Asia-Pacific, but the Indo-Pacific, security, peace, and tranquility, is mandatory in that area. And many Indian startups in the defense sector, many Indian companies in the defense area are today venturing forward. And that collaboration between Indian and German defense manufacturers can give a great fillip 
to international new innovation in the days to come. The third, going back to where I started from, is the cultural exchange between our people. And I believe that students, an exchange amongst them, is a fundamental precept of that. The India-Germany Innovation and Technology Partnership in emerging technologies, whether it's renewable, artificial intelligence, quantum computing, semiconductors, areas where India today is leading across many sectors, will lead to tremendous collaboration in the days to come. I also do believe that the innovation and, in and incubation program for students and the exchange of that will lead to a tremendous fillip in our relationships. And here we have taken a leaf from the German repertoire where vocational training, experiential training is very much a part of your essential curriculum. This year in the budget, the Prime Minister has heralded the Prime Minister's internship scheme in India, where 125,000 students in the first year will get to experience internships with the top firms across the length and breadth of our nation. The final pillar is our commitment to sustainability. Sustainability is a key word embedded in our systems today. And I'm glad to inform you that India has stepped ahead on that front. The Green Hydrogen Task Force that has been put together in India will ensure the fulfillment of our common goals towards decarbonization across all industrial and manufacturing processes and will ensure that the goals of the Paris Agreement become a reality. The Indo-German Green and Sustainable Development Partnership will also ensure that that commitment bears fruition. An investment of close to 3.2 billion euros have been invested in that relationship. So as we conclude 25 years of our strategic relationship, it is imperative for me to describe the Indo-German partnership as a living bridge. A living bridge that unites the world's two most dynamic countries. A bridge that is not built on steel or stone, but built on shared beliefs, ideals, and values. Our connection is also the people, the ideas, and the values that empower each other, and in turn, the world. Marching forward over the next 25 years, the greater promise of both countries to fulfill milestones in their individual national journeys, India on her path to promote and to gain and to become a Viksit Bharat, and Germany celebrating the centenary of your federal republic. Together, our nations can write a new chapter of global progress. As we embark upon that promise and that journey, we hold close to ourselves the spirit of Vasudeva Kutumbakam. The world is one family. This vision of unity and shared responsibility is now more relevant than others. Let me thank TV9 and Barundas Ji and the government of Germany for creating this opportunity, which will stand as a testament that when two countries unite, when innovation and progress unites, it sets upon a path, a beacon for the world to follow. Dankeschön. Thank you so much.